This week's one million in one year is a two week episode. Two weeks ago, I went down about 20,000 of my margin account because I got hit pretty hard. So I implemented a um, cutoff, a lockout number. The lockout number for me is 5,000. If I lose 5,000 in a day, I'm locked out. So that's something new. Also, Jake and I, who's another attorney in our firm, played around with a short and using a limit order to offset a short. And what it does is it, once your short starts going up, your limit order automatically buys, and then you own really two stock. You own the short side position and you own the long position. So that way, if it keeps going up, it offset your, offsets your short losses. And I had the limit set 10 above what I bought it on the short. So most I could lose, I limited my losses there to $10 per share, okay? So that's how you limit a short. So you can play a down market or a bear market the same way you can play a bull market. So that was a good learning experience for me. Um, I'll tell you, as much as AMC might be a meme stock and speculative trading, it has traded on a pattern lately. And the pattern is, it's been going down to about 13 to 1350 and then going back up to 14 or 14.1. Well, I sat down, traded for about an hour and a half on Monday morning and knocked down over 10,000. The rest of that day, I filled in with about another 5,000. So I was up 15 on Monday. Um, I had already made back the 20,000 loss from the previous week and before that. So we had a pretty good week. The rest of the week, um, I really traded conservatively and played some Airbnb, accumulated shares of Apple. I built another 216 block share of Apple because Apple's a pretty good bargain right now at 120. It finished the week at 119. I think the projected strong side, you know, upside of Apple or target price is well beyond that. Um, I'm still a believer in Airbnb. Target price on it is around 250 and it's sitting around 190 a share right now. So still uh, wanting to go back this week and accumulate more shares of Airbnb. So this is my show, One Million in One Year, where I, as a non-trader and just regular person, take $150,000 and do my best to grow it. Um, the goal out there is one million in one year. So right now, done a, a pretty good job at growing that, taking the extra earnings and increase my base position. So what I'm doing is I'm trading off a base set of shares that allows me to, to leverage those shares on margin. And then I'll, I'll trade on margin during the week and take my winnings or my earnings and I will buy more base shares. So I'll also move monies from rents and, and from my stock trading into digital currency sometimes. So I've got about around 50,000 in digital currency, uh, sitting around 180,000 in stock. And I had purchased a condo in Uptown Charlotte as part of a way to take advantage of a depressed real estate market and um, large metro areas that I think will be, will be worth 100, 150,000 more at the end of the year once everything opens back up from COVID. So um, right now at my 1 million in one year, I'm sitting around probably 270, 280 in actual equity in the property as well as digital currency and the market. And that's at the end of the first quarter. I feel pretty good about that. If I could continue that, I think I could hit close to the 1 million, if not over the 1 million in one year. Um, and I'm getting really comfortable with identifying stocks and using a system where I see where a stock is trading in, in my day trading, is swing trading, they call it between one, one value and a, a lower and a high value. And you're able to make money off the off buying the dip and selling the peak or shorting the peak and selling the dip, okay? Um, really, you're buying the dip, but then you you get the difference between what you make, between those, those numbers. So extremely valuable lessons that I'm learning. 
Um, I'm going to show my trades and talk through them. So stay tuned for next week's episode of 1 million in one year. It should be a good week. I just finished going through uh, my stocks. I've started going through a specific layout of how I evaluate stocks. And I'll put a picture in the notes um, of the, the graph, either the one day, three day, five day, or one month, five month, depending on what I'm looking at and how long term I want to hold that stock and when I think it'll turn up or down or whatever I want to do with it. I'm going to show you that too. I'll show you that right now, how I've started to evaluate stock and the things that I think are important. And I'll just kind of walk through that. So this is how I've started evaluating. I will put down um, the stock plays for the week. I'll put my lockout limit there. And that means if I hit $5,000 loss for that day, I'm done. I'm done, I'm cut off, I'm locked out. And a real stock traders uh, working in a uh, you know bigger company that does nothing but trade stock all day, they would literally be locked out of the system if they're having a bad day. So I'm looking at AMC, the news, um, where it's sitting at, um, waiting to buy the dip, because I don't think it's at the dip. If you look over the last couple of days, it's hovering around 14. Previously, it would go down to say 13, below 13. Um, so certainly not the dip there over five days. And then uh, it is a volatile stop. Um, I know I'm using a trailing stop big time and I'll move that trailing stop up so I don't have to watch it all day. Sometimes I'll set it at 0.1 once it gets high enough. Say if it, it was, if I bought it 13 and it got up to 13 and a half, I might move it to 0.1 to ride it up. And then when it went back down, it would automatically sell to secure my gains. And that, that's about 5,900 shares is about sitting right now, what I would be able to buy on the margin. And then if I bought at 13, sold at 14 and 5,900 shares, that's $5,900 uh, profit there. So then I evaluate uh, Tesla. And Tesla, I think is down right now. I mean, obviously if you look at the, the five day chart, it's certainly down. If you looked at a chart beyond that, it would be way down, probably uh, you know $250 down, but uh, you know, looking at what gain I could make if it was up $50 a share uh, with 230 shares. Um, and that's, you know, with a volatile stock like Tex Tesla, that is absolutely achievable. And it was trading at around 700 for quite a while. Okay, if you, if you, if you went past the five days, you would see it was still trading at 700 or above. <clears throat> and I think Tesla is undervalued. I really do believe Tesla's still undervalued. Just playing around with Game, GameStop, I did that some uh, over the previous couple of weeks, but certainly that's something I'm, I'm going to observe. I'm not, you know, there's no way to peg GameStop. It's erratic. Um, keep accumulating shares of Apple, um, you know, evaluated it and possibly trade it, uh, day trade it. Just depends. That's my number three thing to look at. I have two number three. So, Apple and Airbnb that I want to do the same thing with. So they're kind of the same weight. I'm taking a look at Peloton. I haven't really fully flushed that out yet, but it is swinging back and forth um, a few dollars a share consistently um, and potentially set to grow. Square just came out. Cash App is now trading uh, stock and Bitcoin. You can do that straight from Cash App. I don't know how that's going to affect Square stock. My thoughts are it, it's gone down kind of considerably from around 250 to 225 just this week. So, you know, really poised to gain there. Square could be my number one buy in. I really need to maybe reevaluate that. But that's, that's how I am uh, evaluating my stock each week. That's how I'm evaluating it each week. And just trying to be very methodical with not losing more than a set amount each day, starting each day fresh and um, not getting too high or too low uh, or too emotional about stock, just evaluating the plays that I wanna make and putting the priorities on those plays. I think Square should probably Square could easily be a number one priority stock right now, just the same as um, my AMC or Tesla play, uh, because Square, I think, is poised to grow with Cash App now trading stock and um, in Bitcoin digital currency straight from Cash App, so uh, which is a reliable app. 
Um, always been intrigued by Square, but never invested in it. Have used it quite a bit. Uh, but, uh, you know, just trying to be methodical about it. And because I have a tendency to get emotional about anything, especially stock or when things are riding high, and it can really affect me when things go low or if I get locked out. I mean, if I got locked out several days in a row, that would, and I was sitting on the sidelines, that would really get to me. So try not to let that happen. But the reason I put those rules in place is so that I can make it a production, literally assembly, assembly line process and methodically work toward daily goals and gains. You know, the next thing I need to do going into next week is I'm going to find what my daily goals should be. And I'm going to start trying to hit that goal every day. Not the lockout, but the, the gains goal. So I'll add the gains goal. I've already got my, my insurance in there with the lockout. And I know how to protect myself on shorts with limit orders and with stop on quote or trailing stop orders with a percentage or dollar amount where I'm looking to um, buy low, buy the dip and sell the peak. Um, so I, I'm, I've gotten really good at insuring there. And, and if I'm going in on one stock, then I'll calculate my losses to start with on the trailing stop to limit below or at least up to the lockout limit. So there's no way I can lose more than my lockout limit per day. Now, a more seasoned trader, some and really somebody who's trading with a bigger base than I am, um, a bigger principal amount of stock, much more margin allowance, which I'll get to. I'm building, that's what I'm doing. Is I'm, I'm a, I'm, my goal is accumulation right now. Um, they're going to spread their losses or their potential losses among multiple stocks. Like I've heard, don't, don't allow yourself any more than one sixth of your lockout limit on one play. So if I had a big enough spread, enough to work with, enough money, enough margin money to work with, I don't feel that I do. Maybe I do, maybe I could. Um, but I wouldn't allow more than say one sixth or one eighth loss of my total lockout in one trade, if that makes sense. So, um, but I'm getting there. These are things that professional traders do. Um, and I'm getting a real understanding of how to get there. And I think once my uh, principal gets to a certain amount, I, I will be able to spread those potential losses and have more picks and more ability to pick the right stocks because my vision will be greater. I would just have done it longer. So stay tuned for 1 million in one year next week. I'm gonna go through a few of my trades. Well, you know, um, no need. I'll just tell you, I rocked, I beat AMC like a drum. I really did. I beat AMC like a drum this week. And I just kept buying low and selling high. And that equaled about 20K in the positive for me at the end of the week. If you can find a stock that does that, that just oscillates up and down all week, that's perfect. And I'm going to keep tapping that. The only thing that when I backed off AMC was on Friday, really half the day through Thursday and Friday, all day Friday, it really hovered around 14. I still tapped it for a little bit, but not big gains because it, it stopped oscillating like it was. So. I'll wait for it or another stock to go into a groove and a pattern like that for a consistent period of time or start showing that. And then you just start hitting it over and over and over again. And you don't necessarily have to sit there and watch it all the time either. If you have your trailing stops in place and you can just go back and check it at periods through the day to see if it's gone up. And if it has, you might want to move that trailing stop up for example, I'd start at 0.5 on AMC if I bought it at 13 and a half. If it had gone up to 13.8, I might move it up to 0.2. Then I'd insure at least 0.1 gain. And then if it went up, I might go to 0.1. The problem with, with following too close, it's the same as following a car too closely, okay? Sometimes a stock, before it blasts off, will dip and shake off the fleas, like shake off the guys that are following too close like me, it'll shake them off and then it'll go boom, okay? So it, it activates your sell orders if you're following too close on a trailing stop, like at a point one, and then I'm sold and then I miss out on some big gains. So that's not good, okay? That's But that's the 
the detriment at not watching it all the time. And I can't watch it all the time because I have a full-time job. And, and you know, most people who are trying to trade have a full-time job, okay? Most retail traders. So the question is, how can you, there's no perfect answer. There's no good answer unless you're willing to sit here and watch it all the time. I'm getting ready to put together a trading platform and system that you'll see where I have a big 70 inch or multiple 70 inch screen TVs that are divided up. Um, my Mac, just my MacBook alone will allow me to divide those screens up into multiple sections. And I might set aside a day to just sit and show um, how I would trade throughout a day. And if I were able to sit and just watch and trade throughout a day, I think I could take that 20,000 in a week. If I were able to do it five days, I could take that 20 and probably multiply that by much more than five. If I were locked in, concentrated all day, but there's still tools like limit orders on shorts or trailing stops, which you can set at a dollar amount or a percentage or stop on quotes that allow you to ensure losses, to limit losses uh, if you're trading up. So anyway, thanks for watching 1 million in one year, which is one man's journey to uh, try to take control of retirement and, and a certain amount of money and take it and grow it in a year's time um, and learn a ton. And I wanna keep conveying that. I'll convey my wins, I'll convey my losses to you. And uh, I wish everyone out there great luck in trading this week. And you know, I say luck, I really don't mean that, okay? I don't believe in luck. Um, I think that everybody out there is investing in solid companies if, they, if they're smart and they're looking for stocks that are part of their base, which is what you should do, in my opinion, uh, that are solid companies. Uh, like for me, Apple um, or Airbnb. I think that's a solid company. That's one of my solid picks uh, that I think will go up exponentially this year. But also day trading based on charts and reading charts. And maybe we can get into that a little bit next week as well, because reading charts is definitely a science. Um, and when I talk about things that are oscillating and an entry point where you see patterns, and um, professional traders, they look at candle charts and you see where there's patterns down and then patterns up and you can see consistent patterns and you simply buy the dip, sell the peak or short the peak and sell the dip. Um, and you can do that over and over and over again, uh, regardless of, of the company really, um, just based off uh, what the stock is doing at the time but uh, still have to have that firm foundation that you're built off of with solid companies and investments to even get the margin to be able to trade that way. So anyway, 1 million in one year, stay tuned. Next week, I'll, I'll keep it up every week. I'm sorry I missed.